Cherry Pather. I'm uh, the director of the Gordon Institute for Performing Creative Arts at the University of Cape Town. Um, it's a, an interdisciplinary institute that brings together a variety of um, disciplines. Uh, the disciplines are theatre, dance, music, classical music and jazz, the visual art, uh, that's fine art, the sculpture and the painting and photography. Um, and then there's the, 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 the new media and form. Now, what the institute does is that it's essentially a research institute, so it brings, it creates a space for project uh, where different researchers from the variety of disciplines, because the disciplines are extremely well established. Dance, for example, is about 180 years as a, as a department, so they, they're extremely well established as disciplines and what the, the, the institute that I um, come from, what we do is to try to trouble that and to create um, these kind of rogue projects that, 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 mix, that, 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 that mixes, mixes it up a little bit and, and, and particularly with regards to community. So that to try to take that research out into public spaces into um, the city of Cape Town um, and not keep the university um, so far away as an ivory tower. M much of the campus is actually based in the city, so it's not too difficult. But it is about trying to bring bridge that gap between the university's uh, research as an ivory tower and the, the rest of the population. I'm also a choreographer and I create my own work. I do largely um, mixed media work and I've, I've also collaborated with visual artists, architects as well as fashion designers to create um, uh, other, other kinds of realities, especially in the adaptation of classical works like Julius Caesar, which I've just done, um, using the Joe Berg Stock Exchange as a backdrop. The In Fact in the City Festival um, was a festival that started about eight years ago. Um, it is a public art festival and it's, um, it's very much a, um, a festival of, um, of temporary installation and visual art, so it's temporary art and a lot of performance. It, it, it has its roots in a, uh, in a performing arts festival uh, that was located on a particular wine estate and um, the, the, this was the Spear Wine Estate and they were of the opinion that the work that was happening would be better served if it was just in the, in the general, in, the, in, in, in different parts of the city. So we engage with artists every year and sometimes our applications go up to about 500 applications. It's becoming extremely um, how do you say it? Extremely uh, uh, prolific, uh, and and a very, it's a very profound thing because we're we're asking artists to either take work that they've got already or new work that investigates uh, issues of the city. Now, Cape Town is an extremely divided city, and you know we have twenty two years of democracy, but that doesn't mean to say that the the, the cartography, the to topography of the of the city changed in any big major way uh, because we didn't really have a revolution. We, you know, it is pretty much what it is. And what in fact in the city does is to try to create these cross um, conversations, so conversations amongst people who wouldn't normally go to a theatre together or go to an art gallery together. It's a series of performances that happens um, uh, inside uh, public spaces, across buildings, on the side of the road. Uh, and they, sometimes they're very conceptual, sometimes they're quite uh, conservative or conventional. But the most, uh, the, the, the wonderful, uh, the, the, the enduring thing about it is that it is this audience that knows that there's a festival going, so they, they follow it, they know it's going to happen. But the exciting thing is that they, they connect with an audience that doesn't know, that have no idea that this is happening. And that's always, um, that's always exciting to watch because um, it creates for a spontaneity of response. There's nothing measured and, and mediated. It's, a, it's, a, it's an extremely exuberant and um, an, an exciting uh, uh, kind of moment when, when, when people come up against it. Well, the, um, the 
the festival asks for for um, artists to be more vigilant about the society that they come from. So you, you know, so there is a um, you know, it's there's there have been many works that are hugely experimental and very conceptual and um, uh, and, and very research based. But what a public art festival does is that it asks for that that um, that depth to be made available, not to be dumbed down, but to be made available to a wide range of people. And um, that is something that the, the festival has done extremely well. And, and, and so um, artists have had to think of their work in a different way. And especially coming from apartheid, from a time where it was, uh, you know, the arts were quite an elitist activity, um, it's, it's pushed artists to think about how, about the relevance of their, of their work. Um, and this is not to, to we weren't driving them to create work just for social purposes, but they, they, do, they did have to understand, uh, they had to come to terms with the fact that the arts are, after all, um, a social event. It is a, it is a connection with at least one person. And what, how, that, how that connection can be named rich and powerful, that really, really uh, taxes an artist. You know the 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 city and 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 and, and largely the country um, has not had economic transformation. So it has had a political transformation. So we have a predominantly black government. Uh, it's an African National Congress uh, led government. Uh, so, but but the the important thing, of course, to understand is that even though uh, we had a change in in the racial wars, etc., the economics remain pretty much um, as it was. Um, what the what the festival attempts to do is to remind us of these um, of these divisions, uh, but not not in a kind of a heavy way. You know, there, there are many celebratory works, and incredibly, uh, there was a work um, choreographed by um, Sean Olive. Uh, an up and coming uh, choreographer, uh, which involved uh, sixty dancers to Ravel's Bolero, and it, they were they were dancers that came from all over the Cape Flats. The Cape Flats is a series of communities in the outer lying areas of Cape Town, and these these various dancers from tiny you know, twelve year old, uh, eight year old, sorry, ballroom dancers to to you know sixteen year old ballet dancers to. Um, uh, to traditional Kosa dancers, uh, traditional um, uh, Gambu dancers and Pansula dancers and you know, so a range of different kinds of styles coming together in one of the biggest, the largest public spaces. That was really, really powerful. There's another work by, the, uh, by a choreographer by Andila Dellum who is deaf um, and comes from a very, very disadvantaged um, community. Um, uh, a black dancer who trained as a, uh, as a dancer and then slowly began to move into choreography and it's a very, pow it's a very powerful statement I think. It's something about South Africa that is really, really interesting is how people rise beyond their, their particular uh, um, ex ex extremely difficult uh, um, uh, 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 work program. So you can't, you know, you can imagine a black dancer attempting, you know, was deaf, attempting to to rise up and uh, in in a, in a in a in a highly competitive professional world. And he's now one of the country's foremost choreographers. And he created a work uh, with dancers on wheelchairs who were uh, paraplegic. Um, and uh, it's a most moving work, but we located that in the Cape Town station. So people who are coming out of these trains, they come from the townships and very far places of Cape Town, were encountering this, this work that was clearly uh, had something to do with their lives because it was talk, it was making use of that of music that they could identify with, etc. But they were working largely with dancers. There were dancers that were were able, but they were also disabled dancers or dancers in wheelchairs, etc. And that that kind of combination uh, of um, of uh, of physicality 
and the triumph of the human spirit to be able to do that is extremely moving. And, and, and to watch the audience's response um, was, uh, you know, what you can imagine, an incredibly moving experience because he, the, the, the unexpectedness of, the, of the, the fact that they're getting, that they're able to see an artwork in the middle of a station uh, and then to see that kind of emotionally dense uh, work. And so, in fact, in the city, creates, uh, we're, you know, one of the big things that we do is to try to find artists that are able to connect, not just physically or connect uh, artistically, but to really to do, to do co connect emotionally. I think um, that's one of the things that has come up with these 21 years of democracy, that the, with all the, it, it, it is becoming, a, a, you know, it is quite volatile. Uh, but what Infection City does is to find ways to, to uh, allow this volatility to, to come to the fore and to provide uh, f space for it to be looked at. Um, and there's, as I said earlier, there's a lot of space as well for works that are celebratory and you know, that celebrate the vast um, talent that exists in South Africa. Well, um, the, uh, there are, in fact, the City uh, Festival has about 25% international participation. So we've had, in the past years, we've had several artists from the UK. Um, uh, we've, uh, we've had artists from the UK that have actually collaborated with artists from, um, from, um, from South Africa. Uh, and. Uh, the, and, and, and you know, if you if you are interested, uh, the the door is wide open because many embassies, because of the visibility of the project, many embassies are really wanting to to have that kind of connectivity between uh, kind of a global um, a global sensibility in South Africa. So um, yeah, the best is to get onto the website, which is the Africa Centre website. It is uh, the infecting if you just. Google infecting the city.